Alright, I'll admit this question, uh, this problem here that I'm going to show you is not an easy one. Alright, it stumps a lot of students. And so let me work this one out for you, kind of take it step by step. Um, we're given a function h of x, which is x times the cotangent of 8 square root x. Now this here, this 8 square root x is the argument for cotangent. Okay, this is the angle, if you will. This is the angle for cotangent. All right, and then plus 7, some constant hanging out here at the end. Uh, before I get too deep with this and find the derivative of it, let me show you, because <clears throat> we're going to need this when we use the chain rule in just a moment, let me show you how do you find the derivative of 8 square root x. All right, so maybe that's something we can work out real quickly here. Let's go find the derivative of 8 square root x. Move this out of the way for a second. Okay, so if we have 8 square root x, which if it's okay with you, I'm going to write this way, 8 x to the 1 half, right? Because a square root is really just a fractional exponent of 1 half. Well, you know that the uh, derivative rule says, okay, well, let's take that 1 half and multiply it by whatever's out front here, and then we'll subtract 1 from this, right? We'll subtract 1 from 1 half, but I'm going to write the 1 this way. I'm going to write it as 2 over 2. All right, and 1 half minus 2 over 2 is simply just um, is simply just a negative one half. Okay, so I have x with a negative one half now. But look what number I have out front. Between this one half times eight is really just a four. Okay, so I have four x to the negative one half. And since I don't really like negative exponents too much, I'm going to bring that down and write this as four over the uh, or over x to the positive one half. And again, if you don't like fractional exponents, you can even go one step further and write it this way if you want. Okay, But all three of these, I hope you see, all three of these forms right here, I'll circle them for you, are equivalent to each other. Okay, This form here, that form there, and that form there, all three of those forms are exactly the same. Okay, So let's keep that in mind. If you want to find the derivative of 8 square root x, you can write it in any one of those two forms. All right, 4 is in the numerator square root of x is on the bottom. Okay, now, armed with that information, let me set that aside because we might need that later, let's go off and find the derivative of this function here, right? Of this function here. I'm going to use the product rule on this, and then you're going to see in just a bit I'm going to need the chain rule as well. Um, product rule says, since, right, by the way, the, pro, the, the, the uh, derivative of 7 is just a 0 anyway, so I'm not really going to even bother with this 7. I'm just going to ignore it completely for now, okay? So let's call this part of the uh, product here our f, and let's call this part over here our g, okay? So product rule says, let me scoot this over, product rule says, first give me the derivative of f, all right? So here is my Maybe I should do it this way. A put h prime over here. All right. So the derivative of the x is simply just a one. All right. Times the derivative of g, or times rather times just g as it is. All right. I'm not even taking the derivative of it yet. So I'm just going to leave it like so. All right. Well, that's not going to change any, right? Because one times cotangent of stuff is just cotangent of stuff. All right. Plus. Here's the rest of the product rule, plus my f, which in this case is x, times, all right, I'll put that in parentheses, times the g prime, times the derivative of all this. Now here's where I'm going to need the chain rule, okay, the chain rule. And that's because it's not just cotangent of x, but there is inside here, this argument for cotangent is another function in and of itself. So let's do this first. How about we do this? I'm going to cover up this stuff inside and just ask, what is the derivative of cotangent? All right, what's the derivative of cotangent? Oh, the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared of whatever that stuff was, right? Whatever that stuff inside was, which was 8 square root x, okay? But the chain rule says, go one more step. Now give me the derivative of the inside, this inner part. Well, remember we just did that a second ago. The derivative of that inner stuff, right, was 4x to the negative 1 half. Okay, so I need to squeeze that over here as well. Am I going to have room? 4x to the negative 1 half. Barely have room for that, okay? So, 
here's what we've got. This is really huge and nasty, and again, the derivative, if I kept going, the derivative of this constant is just a zero anyway, so I'm not even going to bother with that. So let me clean this up a little bit more because we can simplify that down. That really is our answer, but let's simplify it down a bit. Okay, so I've got h prime is equal to, and again, 1 times this cotangent is not going to change in any, so I'm just going to simply write it as cotangent of 8 square root x. Okay, And now I need to clean up this product over here. Right? I've got three things that I'm multiplying together. Three things. First of all, um, I see a negative sign right there, so how about we move the negative out all the way, right? Because it's positive times that negative is just going to be a negative. I also see a coefficient of 4, so I might as well move that all the way out as well. And here's a couple of things going on. Do you see this x times this x to the negative 1 half? I kind of almost covered up the negative sign there, right? So I have this x times this x to the negative 1 half. Now, maybe let me bring this back for a second. What is the product of x Right, and x to the negative one half. Well, you know that uh, we're, we simply, right? If I write this as x to the first power, we simply add exponents here since the bases are the same. But I don't like writing one this way since this one already has a denominator of two. So how about if I write this one, this exponent of one, like this, two over two? I could write it that way if I wanted to, right? And now, if you see, if you add these, you get a positive one half, right? So if you the the product of x to the first power times x to the negative one half is simply x to the positive one half. <clears throat> or you could write it as the square root of x. Same thing, right? So let's write it this way. Let's write the product of these two things right here, right? These two bases of x as the square root of x. Cool, I like that. Okay, and then here's the rest of it. The rest of it is this cosecant squared and its argument of 8 square root of x. So there is my final answer. Um, you could write it like this, or you could put this term first, and then you put the cotangent. You, know, you could write it either way you want. It doesn't really matter. How about if I write it both ways for you? Okay. You could write it this way if you wanted to. Cosecant squared. It's argument of 8 square root of x plus, and then this term over here, this cotangent. Here we go. Cotangent of 8 square root of x. So either one of those two are the correct answers. I kind of like this one. I'm partial to this one since it's the first one I came up with. And I hope that makes sense to you. So we needed a product rule as well as inside the product rule we needed the chain rule. Hope that helps.